Sister, you want to sing Pat, you got a song uh, tonight you want to sing? Yeah. Are you and Sister Peggy? Would you like to sing a song with Sister Pat? You know what song's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I met a man the other night. Jesus is his name. Uh, Jesus is his name. Is there more to that? <laughs> hey. Bless you today, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Is this our brother? I'm not calling on the phone. Say another song called He Can because he can he can do anything that he has in his name I'm telling you he can and I know that he will stand by your side when the world comes from the knee for there is no one ever done what he does he laid down his life and he rose to live again
right up and walk. And who could cause the deaf and dumb to hear and start to talk? Who could calm a fever crowd? Say the little and speak with the little bit of clay. He touched her in the way and the blinded eyes could see. I'll tell, tell you, you he can. can. And I know that he will stand by your side when the world comes crumbling in. For there is no one.
when I look around and see the good things He has done for me, I know.
Glory. What are we playing in? Glory. Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the blood. Give me a B on play. For the blood, for the blood. I know every time Brother Charles comes around, he likes to hear this song. Amen. And uh, I'm going to try to sing it for him. Thank you. Appreciate that, brother. I have no one to blame. How I longed to hide my face. I was so ashamed of all the wrong I'd done. spoken already about the one that shed his blood. Yes. Amen. Amen. Through every song, every note that was played, every word that was spoken. Glory. Brother Charles shared some great, great scripture and teachings already tonight. Praise the Lord. As I said, I wasn't planning to be ministering tonight. I told Brother Al at the start, I said, I'm going to be shooting from the hip tonight. Man, the Holy Ghost. So, praise God. So we'll see where this goes tonight. But God always comes through. He does. I've had. Preached a few nights ago. 
I was up here slinging snot and crying. Not because I was sick, but because I was touched by God. When we're in God's house, let's reverence Him. Let's give Him the praise and glory He deserves. Let's speak of repentance. Let's cry out for repentance. Amen. Even the saints of God, as this was spoken of, we're no longer sinners. We're saved by Amen. grace. Yes. We are saints of God. Yes. But Paul said, I crucify this flesh daily. Amen. That's how we get rid of ourselves. Lord, help me decrease so you can increase, praise Amen. God. I want to start us out tonight. Sometimes we use this scripture quite often at funerals, and you probably already know where I'm going to go to. Psalms 23, do turn there in your Bibles tonight. If you have your Bibles, I want you just to lift them up a little bit. Shake them around. Let God see them tonight. Now let's make our profession and confession of faith. Amen. Repeat after me with boldness and with a conviction Amen. in your spirit. This is my Bible. This is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. This is the invaluable Word of God. Jesus is the Word. This is the good news, the good report, the sound doctrine. This is what we live by, stand on, trust in. Thank you, Jesus, for your Word. Thank you, Lord. The 23rd Psalm. Sometimes we say it at the graveside of a loved one. But when I read this, this scripture should be something that we should get life out of. It gives us life, praise God. Let, let, me, let, me, let me share something with you here. It says, the Lord. Let's not go any further. The Lord. The Lord. If we truly understand who He is, He is our Lord, our Savior. A king. When you, when you have a Lord, and as, Lord. as Brother just said, when we have a king... We might have been on his property maybe thousands of years ago, but we, we he owned us. He owned everything that was on that property. When we understand that nothing is ours, nothing we do belongs to us, nothing that we own is ours. He is our Lord. The problem that we have in this today, in this world today, is that we're so selfish. You know, we take selfies, about a hundred pictures of ourselves uh, eating a meal at McDonald's or something, or something we made, praise God, or a little puppet we made. We got three thousand pictures. And Lord, God, get that ugly dog or ugly cat. We take pictures of it all the time. Lord, and we take pictures of ourselves. Look at me, 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 look at me. Let me take a few more pictures over here. Or here's a picture over here. Or here's a picture when I was going to the beach. Here's a picture when I was going into church. When we understand, we need to get off ourselves. Amen. We need to get off ourselves and understand that we have a Lord that we belong to. He bought and paid for us. Amen. Every one of us. Amen. We understand truly who He is. He's Lord of my life. He's God of my life. I can't have it my way. I can't have it somebody else's way. I have to have it His way, praise God. He's Lord. Yes. I need to humble myself under Him. 1 Peter 5, 6 says, Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Thank you, Lord. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And He will exalt you, lift you up in due time. The Lord. trouble today, Brother Gary, we don't humble ourselves anymore. We don't submit ourselves to God. Nobody wants to submit. My little grandsons, and they're both guilty of it, and I guess I was guilty of it when I was a little boy too. They go around telling me, you ain't the boss of me. You ain't the boss of me. I'm the boss of this house. And sometimes I have to say, wait, well, wait a minute. You wait and see for a minute, and I know Cindy probably has to go through that too at times. And she'll say, hey, you think you're the boss of this house? Let me show you a paddle here. We ain't the boss of anybody's house. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Without me, you can do nothing. But I also know what Paul wrote by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. So we let's take this a little slope tonight. And I won't keep you long, I promise. But Lord, the Lord the one I submit to, the one yes. I bow down to, the one I give myself to, the one that owns me, Amen. the one I'm under, Lord. Him. Lord. Under Him, the Lord. He's not just my, my Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. Yes. He's my shepherd. Yes, he is. Amen. 
Thank you, Lord. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice, praise God. And he also said, You know what? A hireling will not lay his life down for, for, for the sheep. But you know what? The true shepherd, the true one that has the sheep, the true one that's looking over, the true one that loves the sheep, the true one that protects the sheep, he'll lay his life down for the sheep. And that's exactly what he did. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I have to understand that He's God Almighty. I humble myself before Him. I submit myself before Him. And He's my shepherd that's going to protect me. He's my shepherd that's going to take care of me. And that's what the shepherd did with his flock. Not only would He take care, but He would lead the flock. Sheep are dumb creatures. They have to be led. And you could have a thousand sheep, I was reading a while back, and you want those sheep to are like up, they follow the other sheep. So if that shepherd is leading the lead sheep, all the other sheep are going to follow. We can learn from that. Because you know what? We're all ambassadors of God Almighty. Amen. We're all His people. We're all His disciples. And you know what? We're to be like Him, to use Him as an example. If we're using Him as an example, the new people coming into church, the ones that are new in the Lord, Thank they start you, seeing us. And if we're doing what God wants us to do, they're going to start following too. Does that make sense to y'all? Praise God. So the Lord is my shepherd. And I like this. I, I shall not want. He supplies all my needs. I shall not want. I lack nothing. He takes care of me. He feeds me. He clothes me. Every one of us has a testimony where we've been down and out at one time in our life. Our light bill is going to be shut off. Maybe the eviction notice is coming. The car is being repoed. There's no money in the bank. You put the ATM card in there and don't give it back and you get, you get no money out either. We've been down there. We've been sick. We've gotten the bad reports from the doctor. Lord. We've gotten the bad reports from our neighbors. We've gotten the bad reports from our kids. Hallelujah. And you got Lord. the notice from the courts that you don't want to see. We've all been Jesus. hurt. Thank you, Lord. And out. And we've lacked. I asked one young man one time, I said, are you lacking anything? He says, well, I do lack, and that's a fact. I lack a lot. <coughs> and he proceeded to give me a list of his lacks. I was a little. I wish I could have gone back in the time not asked him that. <laughs> but we've all been there. But how many people in here, we had our hands raised at the beginning of the service. How many times has he filled that lap? Amen. How many times has your light bill has been shut off? Maybe years ago? Or even recently, Amen. he's come through. How many times have you had not enough food to eat? Make your knee. Glory. And he comes through. Amen. How many times when you needed a car and didn't have a car? He comes through. How many times when you needed gas and you needed gas? He comes through. How many times when you needed just a smile? He comes through. Whenever you need just a, a comforting call, he comes through. We were talking about about that this morning. Sometimes when we call somebody or we get a phone call from somebody, you know. Uh, they're asking for prayer or something. I've had people talk to me 15, 20 minutes, and it's hard for me to keep my mouth shut sometimes, but it does happen, and I'll listen to them for 15 minutes. Thank I won't even word. say a word. I won't even share a scripture with them. And then when they get down with the phone, they'll say, Brother Ray, thank you for listening to me. You've helped me so much. Praise you. That's right. And they'll hang up the phone. And I didn't do anything other than say, Hello. <laughs> but he supplies our needs. Yes, yes he will. And you know why we're here today? I said, this was an emergency room. It's a hospital. We're here to get encouraged. Amen. The Bible says to encourage one another. Amen. To lift one another up. Yes, not, not to put each other down. To lift each other up to get encouragement. And you'll find out when you give encouragement, Brother Alex, to somebody, you get it back. Yes. Everything we do is like a boomerang. We throw the boomerang out. It comes back. We pray for somebody. It comes yes, back. We bless yeah. somebody. Yeah. It comes yeah. back. We lift up somebody. Yeah. It comes back. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. I shall not want. Glory I was looking at this word today. He maketh. He maketh me. He's not leading me right now. He's, he's making me. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. When I think of green pastures, I think of something. When you're out in a pasture or a field, there's no city noise. There's a great calm there. There's peace that's there. There's beauty to the soul, beauty to the ear, beauty to the, yes. the eyes. 
But sometimes, Sister Pat, he'll make us lay down for a moment. He maketh us to lie down in green pastures. Why? Sometimes we need to stop as Christians and smell the roses. We need to stop and smell the pastures. We need to stop and see the beautiful rest that's in God. Amen. And how many people know that He is our rest? Yes, yes. He is. Amen. Yes. Now He starts leading me. He leads me beside the still waters. Yes. If He'll lead, I'll follow. <laughs> when He leads, you follow, Sister Nina. Amen. Wherever He goes, follow Him. Amen. He's the one with all the answers. He's the, he's the one that, that, that has life and gives life. Praise God. So wherever He leads you, go. And he's, His light guides every step that you take. Everything you do is not by accident. God is guiding your steps and we listen to Him. And I love this. He restores my soul for those that have had a born-again experience. Brother Charles spoke of that a little bit ago. He's not the man He used to be. You're not the woman you used to be. Amen. We're not the person who we used to be. Amen. Sister Peggy, Amen. we're a brand new creation. Praise God. Amen. Brand new. God doesn't fix something. You know, we can we can take something, we can take something. I could bust this up up here. And then we'll take some duct tape and we'll get a little super glue and we try to try to get it back together. It may even work again. It may even look pretty decent. But it's fixed. That's all it is. But see, God doesn't fix us. He changes us into something that never existed before. That's why the Word of God says, Therefore, if any man or woman be in Christ, they are a new creature, a new creation, something that never existed before. You are brand new. You are unique. It says, Behold, old things have passed away. Old things are gone. Old things are history. I'm not going to look back. Old things become brand new. He restores my soul. He took something that was dead. You were a dead man walking one time, Brother Richard. You, said, yeah, you were a dead woman walking. But now we can walk in the newness of life. We have a life on us. And that life is God Almighty. We have to understand that God gives us this new life. Thank you, Lord. It's within every believer. Every believer. Every born again believer. We have a brand new life. So when I read Psalms 23, it is a... It is a a, 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 a psalm or a, or a scripture for a funeral. It's for us as living. He restoreth my soul. This is a testimony. He's given me a new life. Yes. Amen. He leadeth me. He's leading again. He's not going to make us. He's leading us. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. See, our God's a gentleman. Amen. He wants you to follow Him. Lord, just like when He called Peter out. Come! Come! He's calling us, and He's calling us again for new ministries and new works. Revelation 3.20 I stand at the door and I knock. If any man if any man hears my voice, She'll open that door. I'll come in and sup with him and him with me, praise God. He's knocking on our doors. Well, Brother Ray, that's a one-time experience, is it? You know, we're what we're saved one time. But you know what? He's still knocking. He'll have a new ministry. He'll he'll get he'll get you into a, a deeper revelation of who he is. He'll get you into new new insights of what you can do through him. Praise God. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake, not ours. We need to get out of the selfie world. Glory. What if we took as many pictures of a scripture or the Bible or the singers or the preachers, not me, but preachers, or the church or the beauty of God out there? Praise what the if we took pictures of that instead of 40 of ourselves? Something to think about. I love this. Yay. And you've heard me say this many a time in here. Yay, though I walk. See, I don't have to run. I shared a story when I was a little boy and we lived in Ketchum Avenue, a little dead end street across from our grandparents. And I was probably about five, and my brother Tom was probably about three at the time. And 
I don't know why, it was a real hot night, and the, the, the biggest fan was in our room, and my mom and dad wanted to go in our room, they put us in their room, and my mom would have all these old house coats all the time, and somebody that met my mom, and they would ever see her when she, she'd always wear these house coats all the time, these big, furry, ugly looking house coats. But she had big house coats hanging on the back of the doorway. And so the doors are almost closed, and, and there's no light light in there, but we had a little light coming from the bathroom, from down the hallway. But this coat scared me to death. I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, this is a monster in there. And I, and I started to dream and, and think of monsters getting me and getting my brother and all that. And I woke up just screaming and screaming and screaming. My dad runs in. He goes, what's wrong? What's wrong? There's a monster. There's a monster over there. It's right there. There's nothing there. So it's right there. And as soon as he turned on the light, there was nothing. Nothing. When the light is on, there's no darkness. Amen. When the light is on, you can clearly see what's there. Amen. And when the light is telling us, there's nothing to be afraid of. Amen. And so when we are in the valley, listen to this, when we're in the valley, we don't have to run. We don't have to cower in the corner. We don't have to stop and give up because we're afraid. We can walk to the valley because I'm walking with the master. I'm walking with the shepherd. I'm walking with the one that has a staff with the rod. I'm walking with the one that's going to save me. I'm walking with the one that's going to deliver me. I'm the one. I'm walking with the one that's going to get me through to the other side out of the valley. Yeah, you know how I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We can look at the shadow of death and say, you ain't nothing but a shadow. You ain't death. You're just a shadow. I, I'm not going to fear because the Lord tells me to be of good courage, not to be afraid. Yes. I think it was Roosevelt that said many years ago, and Trump said it himself not that long ago, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Yeah, amen. Fear will cripple us. Yes. Fear will take your life. Amen. Worry yourself to death. And I've shared this many times in this church. Back in the Egyptian times, the hieroglyphics, they used to depict what worry meant. Was a wolf tearing the victim's neck out and blood spattering all over. That's what worry will do to you. It'll kill you. Amen. Being afraid will kill you. Being afraid will stop your ministry. Being afraid will stop you from witnessing. Thank you, Lord. And that's what the devil wants. I'm not saying you're losing your salvation. But you know what the devil wants? If I can put worry in you. If I can put fear in you. You'll stop being the man or the woman I have called you to be. I will fear no evil, for thou, thy art, art, thy art with me, thy rod and thy staff that comfort me. You know, Jesus said, I, my Father, will come and make her abode with you. I'm going to send you another. I'm going to send you the comforter. He's going to lead and guide you in all truths. And I like this, is it? Thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. Amen. You know what the shepherd does? He uses the rod and the staff to kind of get the sheep back on the right track. Kind of give them a little love tap sometimes. I'm still here. I'm still Thank here. That's what he does to us. But you know what he also uses that staff for? Correction. And that rod for? Correction. Not so much correcting. He'll give us a little love tap to get us back. But it's to fight off the enemy. Amen. To protect the flock. Glory. To protect his sheep. Glory to Lord. Thank you. And when we fill that staff, we fill that rod, that comforts us. Now, we get convicted with the Holy Ghost. All of us have. Amen. And sometimes we just get like a little spanking sometimes. But you know what? He's not going to beat his kids to death. He's called a comforter. Not a child abuser. <laughs> just something to think about. And I love this. Listen to this. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of what? My enemy. We read that, we always think about people being enemies. You know who the enemy is? Satan. Death. Cancer. High blood pressure. Arthritis. Depression. Despair. All of that is the enemy. But what God is doing in our sickness and in our depression and our down and out, Sister Peggy, he's, he, he's putting a table out there and saying, I've prepared a table before you. I've prepared a meal for you in the presence of your enemy. All your enemy can do is look. They're not welcome itself. And you know what? Satan is not welcome in our life. We ought to beat our feet. Satan, get behind me. Satan, you ain't welcome here. We don't want you no more. We need to stand up as Moses did with Pharaoh. 
And he's standing with Aaron there. And he's telling Pharaoh, let my people go. Glory. We need to cry out to Satan. Say, Satan, get your hands off my children. Get your hands off my grandchildren. Get your hands off my church. In Jesus' name. And it says, Thou anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Our cup is not half full or half empty, it runneth over. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever. And when that's over with, forever and ever. Praise God. Glory. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Glory. I just want to close out with this. Stand on the word of God. Thank you, Lord. Peter. God brought it to my attention, so I'm going to finish it up. Brother, I like to hear that word boisterous anyhow. There's 12 guys in a boat. And we've heard the story a hundred times. I'm going to go and pray, but you guys are going to go to the other side. You're going to the other side. When God tells us something, we can bank on it. When God tells us something, it's going to happen. Not if, but we start looking around all the circumstances around. Lack of funds, lack of help, nobody supporting you, nobody backing you. All you need is God. Amen. But when God truly tells you something, the world may seem to be against you, but if you and God can come in agreement with something, and He's telling you to do something, do it! You're going to the other side. So they get in the boat, and they start going to the other side. We know the story, the, the storm is coming, and the boat's being filled up, and, and they're frightened, and all of a sudden in the distance they see a figure walking. And you know what? God is in every storm, every situation. Sometimes we think He's just on the mountain. He's in the valley walking with us. He's on the mountain. Whether I make my bed in hell or Mary than make it in heaven, He's there with us. He's everywhere. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you until the end of the age, the end of time. He's with us right now. So no matter how sick you are, how depressed you are, whatever you're like, He is with you. He is with you. He is with you. I want you to say, He's with me. Say it again like you mean it. He's with me, praise God. So, 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 they're going over to the other side of the ship, but they're getting worried here. The boat's being filled up. Where's Jesus? Well, but somebody should have stood up. I didn't care if it was even Judas himself, but somebody should have stood up and said, well, don't worry. We're going to the other side. He said we're going to make it. So let's go to the other side. Let's start praising God that we're going to make it to the other side. Let's not talk about our problems. Let's not talk about the water. Let's not talk about the wind. He said we're going to make it to the other side. Then they see God walking. They see Jesus walking. And all of a sudden they're looking and they're afraid. And the Bible said they thought He was a ghost. And, 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 and they started to cry out. But see, here's the thing. God is in every storm. Yes. We just need to look for Him. Yes. We need to search for Him. Yes. When you have a trouble in your life, you should say, God, I know that you're already with me and you're omnipresent, you're everywhere, and there's a big storm in my life. I'm sick. I got this. I got this. This is what the doctors are saying. But you know what? You're here. You're here. I need to seek you. I need to seek you out because you're here in the midst of the trouble. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. They look out and they see Jesus and they start crying out in fear. Because sometimes we look and when we see Jesus, we miss him. Because we think he's something or somebody else. We miss him because we're not really searching for him. We're afraid of the circumstances. And it blinds us. It put blinders over our eyes. But he'll always give you a reassurance. And he cried out, Fear not! Be of good cheer, it is I. And that's what he's saying right now to some of you tonight. Be of good cheer. I'm here. Be of good cheer. I'm in the midst. The storm looks bad. It doesn't look good at all. But I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I promise you that. I'm one that will not lie. I promise you that. I'm here. Yes. And here's what happened to Brother Peter. Like Brother, Brother Corey the other day over here in Bible study, he got rid of a beat, got filled with God Almighty, God touching him, praise God. Peter, I thank God that same thing and because he wasn't looking around at anybody else. He wasn't looking around at the wind. He wasn't looking around at the water. He wasn't looking around at the boat. 
Lord, if that be you, back in me. And I can see Jesus doing this. Come! And that's what He's telling you to do. Get out of the depression. Get out of the mulling rugs. Get out of the sickness. Get out of all the weight that's holding you back. Get out of there. Get out of the well. Get out of the boat. And when they say Jesus was the only one who walked on water, no, here's a man, a mere man. He got out and he started to walk upon the water. And you know what? He didn't take just a few feet. It doesn't say how many feet he took. But Jesus was far enough away that they could not recognize him at first. So that meant he was a little ways away. But Peter made it all the way to him. We know that no matter where our sin is, wherever we're at, our sickness is, God will be able to reach us. Amen. But we had God and man form here. The Bible said that as the boisterous wind smacked him in the face, as he saw the conditions around him, because just when you're that close to get a touch from God, just when everything's ready to break Thank through, you, just when everything I'm ready, I'm almost there. I can touch the hem of his garment. That's when Satan's going to come through. And he's going to slap you with something. He's going to get your eyes off of him. And the boisterous wind hit him, and just for a second, he took his eyes off. And he started to sink. But even when we're sinking, we know that we can cry out to one. And he cried out, Lord, save me. But here's how close he was, Brother Charles. He was so close that all Jesus had to do was reach down and pick him up. It doesn't matter if it was 30 feet, 20 feet, 15 feet. I never walked in water six inches. I've seen that poor guy fall three times in the water. And he wasn't even the one being baptized. I love you, brother. That's, I'm joking with you. I love you. But what I'm trying to tell you, people, is this. There's no valley that's so dark. You cannot see God in that valley. He is your light. And just as important, He's given you that light. Even when you don't see Him, and you're looking around, God... Remember the scriptures. Remember them. Take them in your heart. And you can be honest with God. God, I know you're here because your word says you're here. I don't feel you. I don't sense you, but I know you're here. And when you see the scary things in the valley, or you see the waves coming in here in the sea, however scenario you want to take, I just say, God's with me. And I don't care what you are out there, or whether you're from hell itself, or man, or whatever is coming against me. If God be for me, who can be against me? And there's a power that's inside of me from God Almighty. That's why we can say, Lord, thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Greater is He that is in you. Greater is He that is in me than He that's in the world. And you can be honest. Lord, I can't feel you right now, but I know you're here. I can't see you right now in the midst of all this nonsense, but I know you're here. So I'm going to use the power that you've given me, the power that's within me. It's not my power. You've given it to us. And I can come and say to that storm, Peace be still in the name of Jesus Christ. You, you have the power to do that. Amen. Just like the seven, 12 and the 70, He's given you Glory. power of attorney to use His name for those that believe in Him. Yes. And I'll end it with this. Because if we truly have not given our lives to Him, that's just a name that we're using. Amen. The seven sons of Sceva, we know the story. Father was a high priest. These scrappling young men, they say, man, there's a demonic man down the road, that crazy lunatic. Let's go and do what Paul's been doing here in town. And we know the story. They went in the name of Jesus that Paul preached about. In his name, we adjure you. We command you to, to, to believe, to be cast out. Now, not one, but how many? Seven. Seven. But remember what God said, just two agree in any one thing. Just two agree in his name. Yes. 
We can bind in earth and loosen earth as it's done in heaven. We're calling a little bit of heaven down. Now, we didn't have two there. We had seven. Glory. Using the name of Jesus. Yes. There's power in the name of Jesus. Power. For the believer. Amen. And the demonic man looked at him and says, Hey, Paul I know. Jesus I know. But who are you? Who are you? Yeah. And we know that those young men got a weapon. The Bible says they ran out naked and bloody. One man bloody seven other men. But that's the question, who are we? Satan wants to put it to your mind, you're like the seven sons of Sceva, you're just using the name. But we have to understand that we truly have given our heart to Jesus Christ. Even when you don't feel it, God's power is there. Amen. God's power is there and we need to stand on the word of God we held our Bibles up and said this is the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth yes. and stand up and say you know what Thank you, Lord. I come against you Satan in the name of Jesus Christ I come against you poverty in the name of Jesus Christ I come against you snake bitten in the name of Jesus Christ I come against the arthritis in the name of Jesus Christ I come against the depression in the name of Jesus Christ I come against Whatever is contrary to the Word of God in Jesus Christ, and I claim victory. And never bring it up again. Start praising Him for your deliverance. Start praising Him for your healing. It's not a claim and naming a claimant thing. It's really believing. If you believe you've already received it, you shall what? Have it. Receive it. But how big is our belief in you? I pray that tonight I said something that I was just letting God have his way tonight. I think sometimes our, our, our better preaching comes when we don't have time to prepare for it sometimes. Sometimes I think we overly prepare, Charles. I remember when I first started preaching at Praise and Worship Church, I have about 20 pages of notes <laughs> for a five-minute sermon. <laughs> I started out with one scripture, but it took me here and here and here and here and here and here, here. But God will have you say enough, and that's it. He's already said enough today. But let's give a love offering to our Lord.